Good morning, Impact family. We thank God for giving us another Sunday morning opportunity, amen, to be amongst one another in the sanctuary and virtually. As we do each Sunday, this is our time for our intercessory prayer. I ask that you take this moment to allow the thoughts of someone else, allow the needs of someone else to invade your mind and your space so that we can go to God on their behalf. Amen. I'm going to ask if you will all please join me in prayer. Gracious Father, it's in the name of Jesus that first, God, we come to tell you that we thank you. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. God, we thank you because you are God, and beside you there is no other. We thank you, God, because you look beyond all of our faults. You look beyond all of our shortcomings. You look beyond all of our mishaps, God, and you see our needs. And for that, God, we simply want to tell you that we thank you. Now, God, as we go forward in this service, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, on behalf of the one that needs you right now, on behalf of the one that feels that they just cannot make it, and I know, God, that they can't make it without you. I come praying, God, on behalf of the one that's sick in their body, that you would touch them with your healing power now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, because we know that you specialize it in healing all manner of disease. So I pray now, God, that your healing will overtake them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for the one that is confused in their mind, who is wondering what move to make next. What shall they do? I pray, God, that you would lead them and guide them in the way that they should go. I pray for the one who is in the prison walls, oh God. I pray for the one that is in the convalescent homes, oh God. I pray for the ones that are in the rehab centers, oh God. We know, God, that you are everywhere at the same time. So I pray, God, that while you are there, God, that you would touch them right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, like you and only you can. I pray for this service, oh God, that you would have your way in this place, oh God. We move our own agendas to the side. We, we rip up our own program so that you and you alone can come in here and have your way. So Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place right now to do what you do, to move how you move, to heal and to deliver and to set free like only you can. I pray for each father in this place on today that you will bless them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. There may be someone who is burdened down right now, God, because they're celebrating this special day without their father because he's gone on to see how long eternity lasts. I pray, God, that you will give them comfort right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for our pastor, God, that you will strengthen him, oh God, that you refresh him, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, so that as he says to bring forth your word, he will do so with the anointing, oh God, that you have placed over his life. And even before the word comes, oh God, prepare us, oh God, to feel what you want us to feel, to, to hear what you want us to hear, oh God, to see what you want us to see, oh God, in the name of Jesus. If there's anything that is within us that will hinder us from hearing your word, I pray that you remove it right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray for the first family, oh God, that you will bless Lady Porter, God, that you will bless their children right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Keep a hedge of protection around them, God, in the name of Jesus, that as they go to and fro, God, that they are covered under your blood, in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, we say, have your way in this place. We say, have your way in this place. We say, have your way in this place. And we thank you in advance by putting our hands together and giving you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
y'all help us celebrate the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, help us celebrate this Lord this morning. Come on, somebody stand to your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. How many know that he's great? Hallelujah. And he's mighty. And he's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, let's sing. Open the eyes of my heart. Open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, sing. I want to see you. I want to see you. Anybody want to see the Lord this morning? Come on, sing. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, yes, Lord. Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I you. Want to Come on, sing, I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, here we go. Everybody sing, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, one more time, shout it out. Sing, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Come on, sing, I want to see you. I want to see you. How many want to see the Lord this morning? Sing, I want to see, see you. Lord, we want you to have your way. I want to see you. Come on, sing, I want to see you. I want to see you. Open our hearts, come on. Sing, I want to see you. I want to see you. Somebody give him praise right there. Hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. We've come to praise his name this morning. Hallelujah. We've come to give him praise. Somebody shout and praise him right there. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody shout and give him praise. Hallelujah. We've come to praise him. Come on. Here we go. Everybody say praise the name. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing praise the name of the, the name of Jesus. Why? Because he's my rock. He's my rock. Yes, Lord, he's my fortress. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my deliverer. In him, In him. Will, I will I trust? Praise the name. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody right there giving praise. Come on, let's shout and praise him. Hallelujah. This time sing with us, everybody. Sing praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Will you help us praise him this morning? Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. Come on, sing praise. Yes, Lord. The name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing. He's my rock. Yes, Lord, he's my portrait. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Come on, sing praise the name. The name of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can I get somebody to shout and praise him? Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. Everybody sing it like you mean it. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hey. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Would you help us praise him out there? Praise him. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, sing. He's my rock. Yes, Lord. He's my fortress. Yes, Lord. Come on. Somebody let's praise him. Come on, everybody. Shout to him. Let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Let's give him one of the highest. 
highest praise. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Come on, everybody sing hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on. You sing with us. Sing hallelujah. Right there, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and give him praise. Somebody lift your voices and tell him thank you. Thank you for another day. Come on, everybody. Shout it out. Put it up. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, say hallelujah. Yeah. 
Come on, sing, sing. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Your name forever reign. Your name forever reign. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Your name forever reign. Your name forever. King of kings. King of kings. Lord of lords. Lord of lords. We give you glory. We give you glory forever. forever Come on, King of kings. King of kings. Lord of lords. Lord of Forever. Forever and always. Come on, sing. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Your name forever reign. Your name forever reign. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Your name forever Your name forever reign. King of kings. King of kings. Lord of lords. Lord of lords. We give you glory. We give you glory. Forever. Forever and always. Come on, King of kings. Lord of Lords, Lord of Lord, we give you glory, we give you glory forever. forever and always. Come on, sing. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Your name we will proclaim. Your name we will proclaim. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Your name we will proclaim. Your name we will proclaim. Second of kings, King of kings. Lord of Lords, Lord of Lord, we give you glory. We give you Forever, forever and always. King of kings, King of kings. Lord, of Lord of Lords, we give you glory. We give you glory. Forever, forever and always. Say, King of kings, King of kings. Lord, of Lord of Lords, we give you glory. We give you glory. Forever, forever and always. Say, King of kings, King of kings. Lord, of Lord of Lords, Lord, of Lord. we give you glory. We give you glory. Forever. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We 
and let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Ah, let's give him praise. 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 The devil will be defeated. Let's give him praise. God will be exalted. Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, me. Oh, me. Hallelujah. Glory. As we move on, if I can get everybody in the building, just stand to your feet. Ah. I'm sorry, his name is holy. His name is holy. Come on, put your hands lifted. Repeat after me. Just say, the Lord has done great things for me. Where have I been? Come on, say like you mean it. The Lord has done great things for me. Where have I been? If you shout it out one more time, the devil will be defeated. Say the Lord has done great things for me. Where have I been? If I have any glad people in this building, give it praise. Give it praise. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. vision. Our vision is to be a Christian, multicultural, family-oriented, revolutionary ministry known for impacting the world through reverent worship, professionalism, and all we do, and keen development of people who worship above all. Our mission, to boldly change lives by reflecting the love of God through service, self-sacrifice, discipleship, and worship, we can make the impact. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to welcome all of our first-time guests that are here with us and all of those that are on the line. Um, please give us a thumbs up if it's your first time being with us and all of those that are here. Could you just stand and let us recognize you and give praise to you for being here. 
Oh, okay, so it looked like all of us are members. So good morning, members. It's good to see everybody. Our announcements, pause and pray every Tuesday and Thursday at 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. At this time, we will hear encouraging words from our anointed ministers of the Impact Church that will take us through the day, bring us back to the evening, and take us on through the week. Amen. Wednesday, we have WWE, which is Wednesday Word Experience on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. <laughs> woo woo! Amen, amen, amen. You can see us on YouTube and on Zoom and on Facebook, because I catch you on Facebook. Um, this past week was a very good teaching, not that they're not all good, but it made me stop and think. It says, um, you know, the favor, how can we get into the favor of God? I've learned that one hour a day, spending time in the Bible, reading the Bible, asking God to reveal himself to you so you won't have to believe and listen to what someone else say and say he's a healer you will see it in the word for yourself that he's a healer when they say he's a provider you will see it for yourself that he'll provide when they say he a deliverer you will see it in the word that he is a deliverer so my challenge to myself is to stay connected in the bible one hour a day reading so I will know God for myself. And I encourage you to do the same. And whatever those seven things he gave us on Wednesday night, pick one. But I think the most important, know God for yourself. Because when you have to call on him, you will know who to call on and how to call on him. Amen. Impact Social Media Team is looking for members to join their team. If you are interested or have experience with social media, photography, or creating social media contents, email us at impactchurchmediagroup at gmail.com. That's impactchurchmediagroup at, impact at gmail.com. I'm sorry. We um, invite you to continue to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Impact Church Now, and on YouTube at Impact Church Now. So I invite you now to just sit back and enjoy the service and just let God have his way. Let him move in you. Let somebody see the God in you. Amen? Amen. God bless.
that God is. Hallelujah. How many know that God is? Hallelujah. Whatever you need him to be, somebody lift your hands and thank him for being God. That's all we need to thank him for is just being God. Can I get somebody to thank him as we prepare for the word of the Lord? Just thank him for being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise for being God. We give you praise for being God. We give you praise for being God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. you today because it is that you have been so good to us because you've been so kind to us because you've looked beyond what we deserved and gave us what we needed We can't say thank you enough. Lord, there's nobody in this place or online who can justifiably say and claim that you have not been a good daddy. You've been a good father to us. Because of that, Lord, we thank you that we don't have to wait for a date on a calendar to praise your name. We don't have to wait for the calendar to say Father's Day to know that we have a great Father who keeps us, who heals us, who directs us, who guides us, who orders us, who provides for us, who whenever we need God, you are there at every step of the way. You're a good daddy. Lord, now we ask that you would continue to bless us with words, with wisdom, with power, with inspiration, with motivation, with enlightenment, with challenge, so that when we leave this place, we can say once again, our God has done it. We claim it. We declare it. We receive it. In Jesus' name, and everyone who agreed said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, if you're grateful for a good father, put your hands together. We can all celebrate that. Come on and praise our God, from whom all blessings flow. If you're at home online, why don't you put those hand claps in the chat. If you in here, come on, put your hands together and praise God for being a mighty good father. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we should rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm grateful to be in church. I mean that. Not to be looking at church, to be in church. Any, any of y'all are grateful to be in church this morning? Praise the Lord. We're grateful to have this opportunity. If you stand with me for just a few minutes, I'll get right out of your way. I don't plan to be before you long. I know that y'all are all going to make sure that the men and the fathers in your life get the steak and the big piece of chicken today. I know y'all are going to make sure. And so would you join me? I know we celebrated our Heavenly Father, but for every natural human father who is responsible come on join me and celebrating these men amen we thank god for you and we celebrate you for all that you've done for your contribution for your example for being a man 
we thank God for you. I don't care what nobody say, manhood is always going to be necessary. Always. Always in all ways. And so uh, we thank God and we celebrate men on today. Amen. Also, allow me to take a moment and to thank you and to also wish you a very happy Juneteenth day. Yeah. Put in the comments, will you? Happy Juneteenth. Y'all can do better than that. Happy Juneteenth. We thank God for that as well. And we're grateful for this day. I know y'all got big plans. I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, I want to give you uh, just a bit of a disclaimer before we go forward. Uh, or as it pertains to today's sermon, uh, the first thing I want to tell you is that I don't apologize for nothing I say. All right, that's first thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, because, because we live in the age of uh, virtual and the internet, I know that there are times when it is much easier now to be used as a sound bite and people can take a piece of what you say. Uh, and, and use it as something that surmises everything that you say. Um, I've been very prayerful this week because God gave me this word on Tuesday. And I said, Lord, you sure you want me to say it like that? And he said, I want you to say it just like that. Man. And as we went throughout the course of the week, uh, the more and more I went forward, the more and more I became less concerned about how somebody was going to take it. And so uh, if you've been around me for a while, then you know me already. You know, a brother will pretty much say what's on his mind. Uh, so, and that's the way God made me, and that's just the way I'm going to be. And so, uh, at the risk of whatever it is that God has given to me, that I believe that God has given to me to say today, I want to encourage you, whether you're online or in this place, not to tune me out until I'm done. All right? All right. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> With that being said, let's get down to it. In the book of Genesis... Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. Beginning at verse 14 through verse 15. I'm reading this morning, this is going to sound strange to you, from the King James Version of the Bible. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49. Verses 14 and 15, according to the King James Version reads this way. Y'all ready for it? It says, Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Can I read it one more time? Issachar 49, I mean, Genesis 49 says, Issachar is a strong ass, crouching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and that the land, it was pleasant. And he bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. I want us to preach and think this morning on this thought, a grown ass man. Yeah, that's what I said. A grown-ass man. I might as well say it like I tell you, put it in the comments. Listen to me, if you will. At the time of our text, brothers and sisters, the chapter of Genesis 49, Jacob is relaying and conveying a blessing to his sons. Jacob is the husband of two wives, Rachel and Leah the father of 13 children, 12 sons, one daughter. Jacob is about to die. 
Before he dies, he does something that every father should see as an obligation. What he does is before he dies, he leaves a blessing for all of his children. One by one, Jacob speaks blessings over all of his sons, not simply monetary blessings. He does more than that. He speaks into their lives direction and purpose. Y'all can say amen. It's all right. The best blessings, whether you know it or not, and Jacob is depicting this, are always more than money can buy. To all 12 boys, Jacob speaks based on what he knows about his children as a father, but also what he sees for them as a spiritual guide. When he gets to his sixth son, the boy's name is Issachar. He gives him a unique kind of a blessing. It's obscure. Issachar receives a unique blessing in that his father Jacob cannot give him the blessing without first depicting Issachar's character. He compares him to what the Bible calls an ass, which is the ancient term, biblical term, for a donkey. Now y'all can get over it, all right? Donkeys were anciently purposed as working animals. Because of their strength and their agility, they were purposed to abide in the assistance and to aid in the assistance of the hard labor of lifting and pulling. Donkeys were symbols of nobility, symbols of strength, symbols of high spiritedness, and symbols of endurance. What's interesting, though, is although every donkey has the same potential, not all have the same characteristics. Some of y'all are going to get it in a minute. Truth is that they all aren't noble. They all aren't strong. They all aren't high-spirited. They all aren't enduring. Here's the thing. They just all have the potential to be. This is why Jacob issues his blessing to his sons prophetically. He doesn't tell them what they want to hear. He tells them what they need to hear. In my opinion, Issachar is the most profound blessing because he's challenging Issachar to be more than just a grand possibility. Why? Because the world is filled with people who have possibility. Not many of them will actually achieve what they're capable of, not because they don't have what it takes, but because they have a donkey's dilemma. When the weight of life comes down on them, they don't know how to stand up. They have issues on the sides of life. Somebody say the sides of life. Note that Issachar is depicted in this text through his father Jacob's eyes as a donkey who obviously has a past. But that ain't the problem. He also has a future, but that's not the problem either. His problem are the things on the sides of life. The strength of the donkey is proven not by what happened yesterday or what could happen tomorrow. The donkey's only hope and how he handles the load that God has given him today. His strength is defined not by the load he carried yesterday, but if he can deal with what's on his back right now. And so his strength is defined, y'all. Jacob is suggesting to Issachar as he's laying on his deathbed by comparing him to a donkey. He's telling him, you can go far in life 
because you're strong. You can go far in life because you're noble. You can go far because you are self-confident. He says, but is a car, there's a load on you. And I notice as your father that every time something heavy comes on you, you act like a lazy donkey. He says, every time something comes along, you can play like a little ass boy. And not handle it like a grown ass man. I know some of y'all are bothered by that. I know that the curse is getting on some of y'all nerves. And, but I want you to know that if it's getting on your nerves, it is exactly what Jacob was trying to do to Issachar. Jacob was trying to tell Issachar. That the loads on the side of life are really simply the curses that you are experiencing along the way. He says, and because you do not know the character of a strong donkey, that it's not depicted by one who can walk and be vibrant because nothing is on their back. It is actually depicted by the one who can stand when everything is on their back. He says, Issachar, I want you to know that in life, manhood, for those of you who think I'm not preaching to you, personhood can get heavy. But God is not the kind of God that allows you to be relieved of the loads of life. God is the kind of God who will help you stand up under the loads of life. And understand that if God be for you, I'm looking for a witness in here. I don't know what I got online. Who can really be against you? I'm looking for five men who can just be a witnessing warrior and a testifying saint. That manhood can be difficult, but with God, no matter what the load is on your back, you will always be able to stand and bear what it is that life gives to you. So the question becomes, brothers and sisters, this question is pertinent for us today. How you been handling your load? How has life been going for you since everything has gotten so heavy? How are you faring moving forward? Are you concerned about everything that's weighing you down? Or do you understand that the issues from your past can't stop you from the promise in your future? Uh, do you understand that there may be loads on your left and on your right, but there's a God in your heart that always endows you to lift and to work and to pull and to push and to conquer and to overcome everything that is trying to hold you back? Some of y'all ain't going to be able to get out your feelings. You see, Jacob says to Issachar, you, you got a problem with the curses. He says, and so let me depict to you that unless you take on the attitude of what's in you and not what's around you, you will never be able to move forward. For some of y'all, you're missing it. And so you should know that the ancient character of a donkey was graded or uh, 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 judged by whether or not it would carry the load. In ancient times, before they were going to put the load on the donkey's back, they would have the donkey to lay down. And when it laid down, they would then put the load over the donkey's back. But he didn't, he wasn't judged whether or not he was ready to work yet until they gave him the signal to stand up. When he would go to stand up, watch this, if the donkey decided to stay there and become stubborn, the first thing they would do was give him a chance. Somebody say, give him a chance. Y'all going to get with me. I'm going to go somewhere. And, and he, he wasn't, he, maybe he'd never had a load like this on his back before. Never, maybe he never understood what it meant to have to stand up under this kind of pressure. Maybe he was surrounded by strangers and wasn't able to stand up to the challenge. And so the first thing they would do was give him a chance. Somebody say, give him a chance. I want to talk to you about some man around you who has a load on him and you frustrated with him because he won't stand up. God told me to tell you the first thing 
thing you ought to do before you give up on him, before you walk away from him, before you throw in the towel, is perhaps you need to just give him a chance. Maybe, maybe you've got to look at the load that's on his life. I ain't saying you got to give him every chance, but perhaps you got to give him a chance. Maybe before you go complaining to everybody about him and brand him sorry and disuseful, maybe the first thing you need to do is give him a chance. Maybe your daddy wasn't everything he ought to have been. Maybe your husband was not everything he ought to have been, but, but maybe sometimes we have not properly assessed the load and maybe we just need to give him a chance. Somebody say give him a chance. I, I know that maybe he didn't have a daddy. Maybe he didn't have a male figure to show him and maybe he just needs a chance because sometimes the load can make you think you can't stand even when you can and, and you may not have a man's load on your back but there's something that you got to push pull and you're believing God to help you stand through and you need a chance as you move forward as well. I wonder why y'all so quiet on me. You ought to just say give him a chance. Watch this uh, as, as they assess that the donkey will not raise up. The first thing they do watch this is not lighten the load. They adjust the load. <laughs> I came to preach. I sure wish y'all came to say amen. Uh, uh, y'all, they wouldn't lighten the load. They would adjust the load. Somebody say adjust the load. What they did was they would try to play with the mind of the donkey. And because the load was on both sides, they would move something from one side and put it on the other side. And maybe as the donkey was feeling one side become lighter in his mind and in his spirit along the way while they're adjusting the load, the donkey might be implored to stand up. Watch this. And if the donkey, while they were adjusting the load, would stand up, they'd say, oh, this is a good one right here. After this one would stand, they would then balance the load back out after they proved to him that you can stand and handle everything. Some of y'all are going to miss it, but I came to tell some man here today that while you're praying that God would take your load away, I want to be sure to tell you that there's some things, brother, you got to deal with. There's some things you're going to have to go through. There's some stuff that God ain't going to take off of you because he needs you to be a provider, a protector, and an example. There's some loads that God ain't never going to move, but God will adjust it for you. And God says that when I'm adjusting things in your life, all I need you to do is stand up by faith and then I'll level everything out so that you can move from where you are to where I want you to go. I wish some woman in here would point at some man in here and say, I ain't praying for God to move it, but I'm sure praying that he'll adjust it. I don't know what you're going through on your job. I don't want God to move it because it's going to make you stronger, but I pray that he'll adjust it for you. I don't know what you're going through in your body, but somehow when God shows you that he's a healer, when he adjusts you from sick to healed, you're going to learn that your future is still brighter, not because he took it off of you, but because you learned what to stand up under. I wish you'd shake somebody and tell them it's time for us to stand up. Somebody say stand. Somebody say stand. The problem is with many of us is that the curse is offending us and because the curse and the load is offending you you can't stand while it's on your back there's a whole lot of men a whole lot of people that have to carry a load there's men who have to carry a load I know we talked about the loads that are on humanity but since it's Father's Day can we talk about the loads that are on men there's a load, brothers. It's on your left and it's on your right. It's the load to be a provider. It's the load to be strong at all times. It's a load to hide all your emotions and act like you're strong all the time. It's the load of being present all the time. It's the load of appearing and working to be financially stable all the time. It's the load of being in competition all the time. It's the load of competency all the time. Y'all can look at me like that if you want to. It's the load of producing all the time. It's the load of trying to finish strong all of the time. And since the beginning of mankind, hear this, there has always been, somebody say always been, since the beginning of mankind, there has 
always been, somebody say always been, there's always been a demand on men to stand up and be men. Let me just for you, a load comes with manhood. And as long as you sit there is the car. Jacob came to tell you your future will be today is the day that God is calling you to stand up under everything no matter how heavy it is because if you choose to stand God will choose to hold I wish I had a witness here today it's, it's important for us to get this watch this I, I like it because Issachar his father Jacob is depicting to him what they call in America the masculinity crisis <laughs> The masculinity crisis. Don't get sensitive on me. It ain't got nothing to do with sexual preference. It has something to do with a man being a man. And it asserts that in these days, and particularly in the communities of those of us of a darker hue, that many of our women are having to stand in the place and become the woman and the man. I knew y'all get quiet. Because the man won't be the man. The masculinity crisis talks about how men are running from their family responsibilities, from their labor responsibilities, from their spiritual responsibilities, not understanding that if you don't bow to God, nobody will ever respect you. Not understanding that if you don't take care of your home, there's no reason for anything to ever look out for you. Not understanding that if you are a man of excuses, is always talking about why you can't get nothing done. Ain't nobody ever going to feel sorry for you. Everybody's always going to try to figure out how can you be a man and not be able to make a way. America talks about a masculinity crisis. Y'all ain't got to say amen because I know you don't hear it no more. I know that there are many men, most men, and particularly those in our community who are sitting up on the couch playing video games while their girl is going to work. I'm trying to tell you, it's a shame that make... Preach past the porter. Don't be quiet. There's a whole lot of men, watch this, who, are, who have come of age. They look grown, but they're not grown. They got more excuses than everybody else. They got excuses like children. They got excuses of how the whole world is against them, of how nothing is working out for them. And then they're looking at their lady and seeing their lady get up every morning and go to work, watching her pay the bills, drive the car, taking her debit card when they drop her off at work as high as gas prices are driving her car around everywhere while, they're, while she's earning a hard living taking care of the children not understanding that ain't nothing gonna come to you because you make excuses if you can become proficient at them video games you, you need to do something you ain't the man until you earn the right and the title to be called a man otherwise you are a grown boy That's how it works. Somebody say, that's how it works. It ain't never going to change. It been like that since the beginning of time. I got Bible for you if you don't believe me. When Eve ate the apple, ain't nothing happened. But when she took it to Adam and he took a bite, then their eyes became open. It's something about when the man messes up. You think, you think I'm just going on a rant, don't you? And you should look at verse 15. You'll see I've been preaching the text the whole time. Jacob looks at his son Issachar, and Jacob says to Issachar, he says, look, he says, um, he says your problem, boy, is that you, you addicted to rest. <laughs> Y'all think I didn't make this up. I'm serious. It's in, he, say, he says, you are addicted to rest. You looked at rest, and you saw it was good. And so now all you do is lay around and complain. You are addicted to rest. You'd rather go in the house, have a seat, and talk about the people on the job that you left and that you have performed at. 
instead of put some energy into your qualifications, making yourself better, and getting the job that you're worth and not the one you had. You'd rather sit around and tell everybody how the world is against you while you see success happening around you. And you'd rather get jealous of the next man for doing his thing instead of using it as inspiration for you to go and do your thing. You would rather have baby after baby after baby after baby by woman after woman after woman after woman. You ain't taking care of nobody. You ain't going to see nobody. You ain't paid no child support and have the nerve to blame it on the system. You are addicted to rest. You you so crazy that when it get cold, you commit a crime so you can go to jail so you ain't got to be outside. Something ain't wrong with everybody around you. Something wrong with you. You are addicted to rest. You'd rather the government take care of you than you get up and be a man and take care of yourself, is a car. And just know, the masculinity crisis ain't got nothing to do with who earned the most money. It's who is doing the most providing. And just because, hear this, just because somebody make more money than you doesn't mean that they provide more than you. I wish I had a witness here. Y'all have to excuse me. I was raised by grown-ass men. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is when I was coming up you weren't allowed to make no excuses you weren't able to they didn't have to my, my, my daddy used to tell me if I have to tell you again it's going to be a painful experience it was, it was about being a man if I got up in the morning got ready for church and my shoes wouldn't shine and my clothes wouldn't iron it was a problem in the house y'all hear me when I when I blamed things on somebody else and my sisters it was an issue my father would tell me when I was growing up grow up be a man take responsibility for who you are and stop looking around making excuses for somebody else you are addicted to rest one of the greatest things my father used to tell me and my brother we were growing up I think his greatest form of discipline was he would look at my three sisters and say as long as y'all are doing what you're supposed to do you can stay and then he'd look at me and my brother and say when y'all turn 18 y'all gonna miss this I'm trying to help somebody I'm serious he'd say when y'all turn 18 I don't know where you're going. You finished that sentence here. But it was very clear. He said, I don't know if you're going to college. I don't know if you're going to the military. I don't know if you're going to get a job. But you will not be sitting up in here with your legs crossed, eating my food, living in my heat, enjoying my air while I get up and go to work. And y'all here sitting on chill. That's not how it's going to work. He was letting us know that is, an, that is a poor excuse for manhood. And if homelessness got to teach you how to stand up, he says that's the lesson you're going to learn. Y'all going to miss it. This is all Jacob is saying to Issachar. He's telling <laughs> And then Bill, he tells him, he says, he says, because, y'all watch, he says, because you looking around the land and you see how pleasant it is. <laughs> Don't miss this. A father is talking to his son about everything he worked and built for the family. And he's saying all you want to do is rest and enjoy the pleasantries that I built. You living in my house. You driving my car. You eat my food. Your mama is my wife. <laughs> y'all gonna miss it. I'm trying to help somebody. See, some of y'all, some of y'all, you ain't go, you can't say this to your children, so I got to say it for you, see. And some of y'all scared. You don't talk like, well, they coming along. No, I don't know. Mm -mm. Shape up or ship. I'm going to work with them, you know. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a poor excuse. When a man enjoys the pleasantries of a land that he doesn't provide for. <laughs> I 
Keep preaching, Pastor Porter. Keep preaching. They'll get in there. It's, it's a shame. Are they, are they with me online at least? Are they with Praise the Lord. It's, 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 it, it is important for us to understand that men who walk around enjoying rest and who enjoy the pleasantries that other people provide are not grown men. <laughs> Do y'all hear that? I know, I, I know, I know. I know, y'all, it's, it's, it's difficult because, because you don't hear it. But it's, it's the truth that if you're taking care of him and he grown, you should stop immediately. If you call him son, nephew, grandson, cousin, husband, boyfriend, No grown woman should be taking care of any grown man. <laughs> Y'all should see the look on your face. Y'all hear me? Jacob tells his car, I'm out your way. I know y'all don't like me much today. It's all good though. Jacob tells Issachar, he says, uh, he says, yeah, you, you, you addicted to rest. And, and uh, you looked around here and you see how nice it is and you think it belonged to you. He says, but Issachar, I see something in you that you don't see yourself. He says, I see you when the load gets heavy. Not running from it. Not laying there making excuses. I see you bowing your shoulders under the load and lifting up what's ever under there through the power of God. He says, and I see you living a life of tribute. It's important for men to understand that it ain't your job to be appreciated. You want somebody to tell you how much they appreciate you. Chances are, that ain't the way it's going to work out. Not soon in life for a man. He talks to him about tribute because tribute ain't got nothing to do with appreciation. It has something to do with gratefulness. He says, I want you to live in a way as a man. Not where people are always walking up to you telling you how much they appreciate you. But after you've given yourself after you've worked your fingers to the bone, after you've lifted what nobody else can lift, I want somebody else who benefits from what you've lifted to look back at, at their life and see one day that they would never have what they had if it wasn't for you. No matter what they say about you, no matter what they've done about you, no matter what your issues were, brother, no matter what your inclinations were, somebody, some child ought to be able to look back. You might be dead or you might be alive, but they should be able to look back and say, I thank God for my daddy. I thank God for everything he lifted. I know he was rough, but I thank God because he kept a roof over our head. He wasn't gentle. He wasn't kind. He didn't always understand, but the brother was a provider. He was a protector. He was always there. He was sacrificial. He took us to church. He taught us what it meant to survive, and I may not have appreciated him all the time, but Lord knows I'm grateful for it. That's why he says, I want you to live a life of tribute. Part of the reason why you ain't lift nothing is because you're worrying about how it's going to look when you lift. You're worrying about what it's going to look like if you walk into McDonald's and get a job. To any real man, it's going to look like you finally got yourself a job. And he's going to celebrate you. You wonder what it's going to look like if you go back to school at 40. To anybody who didn't and to anybody who did, they're going to say, finally, you're getting yourself together. Congratulations. If I can do anything to help, let me figure it out. You're going to know what it looks like. You want to know what it looks like for you to go back and have to start again. And he's saying, no, this is what it means to live a life of tribute. A life that somebody's grateful for. It's what separates the boys from the men. 
I'm out of your way. I'll be gone. But there's one more man who lived a life of tribute. He had both examples of manhood, not in front of him, not behind him, but on each side. It was Jesus hanging on Golgotha's hill. Men, watch this. One man, both men had a load, but one man decided that on one side, one man said, you know what, Jesus? I'm mocking you. If you were who you said you were, if you're the kind of man you said you was, why don't you get off this cross and take us with you? The other man says, no, the load of the cross is heavy. He says, but Jesus hadn't done anything to have to be up here with the rest of us. Watch this man who's a thief, who's dying, who turns to Jesus and says, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, he's just trying to lift his load. Y'all going to miss it. Y'all going to miss it. Y'all was excited until I, talk, I started talking about Jesus. He says, when you come into your kingdom remember me. Watch this. Jesus looks at his manhood. Y'all gonna miss it. Jesus looks at the ability that he wants to stand up under the load. And Jesus says to him, today because you're willing to stand through all you've been through, you shall be with me in paradise. This is all Jesus is saying is that I ain't worried about your past. I ain't worried about your future. What I want you to know is if you can face the load of today, it means you are formerly, you are formerly a grown man. I wonder if there's somebody here who got the same load leaving church that you had coming in church, but you made up your mind, I'm going to stand through it all. You ought to tell somebody, I'm going to stand through it all. You ought to tell somebody, I'm going to stand through it all. Tell somebody, I'm going to stand through it all. Hard times, easy times. Rough times, easy times. Dark times, light times. But whatever God brings me to, I'm going to do all I can to stand. This is your job, my brothers and sisters. To stand through every issue in life, let me tell you something. No matter how heavy it feels, God put it on your back because you can stand with it. If you pray any prayer, don't pray for God to take it from you. God put it on you for a reason. If you can pray any prayer, pray this prayer, Lord, adjust it. Adjust it. Adjust it. Give me some light days. Give me a light perspective so that I can stand up and you can put what was on me to make me who you called me to be. I'm telling you, this is the only way we ever grow up in Christ. Jacob said to Issachar, I'm saying to you, the Holy Spirit is saying to us all, your future is bright. You can do whatever you put your mind to. You can accomplish everything that God has put in your heart to give. But you cannot do it making excuses for the load in your life. You've got to make up your mind that whatever's on me, I'm going to stand through it all. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you receive it, even if you don't, you ought to say thanks. Be to God. Thank you, Jesus for growing us up. Thank you, Lord, for making something out of us. I wonder if there's somebody here who just, who's mature enough to thank God for the load. To thank God for the load. To thank God. I know everybody can, but to thank God for the load. Because you know the load is making something out of you. The load is making you stronger. And all that God has called you to be, you will become. Because you're going to do it under the load. As we stand in this place, all over this place, the doors of the church are open. They're open for somebody who wants to grow up. Somebody who knows you can't keep living like you live. Or somebody who wants to pray a more mature prayer. Somebody who says it's not about what God can do for me. God has done all that God can and should do for me. It's about me rising to the challenge of what God provided. If you're here today, my brother, my sister, if you're watching online, there's a link in the comment section. If you're here, you gotta step out by faith. 
If you're online, you got to press that link by faith. If you're here, then God is calling you. Your Father is calling you out to be something better. He's telling you, come get your blessing. Stand up under the load. You've been resting too long. You're enjoying the pleasantries of somebody else's land. But you're going to believe God today to empower you to create what God has put in your heart. If that's you, you got to step out on faith. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that Jesus lived, died, and was resurrected for your sins, and you shall be saved. If that's you, move from where you are. Come down these aisles. Click that link. We're trying to tell you there's nothing better. Why don't you come? We're waiting on you, brother. There's nothing better. We're waiting on you, my sister, than knowing Jesus. Than knowing Jesus. He'll pick you up. Come on. He will pick you up and turn your life He'll turn your, your life, life around. around. Tell somebody you ought to know him. You ought to know him. You ought to get to know him. Get to know him. And don't wait. This is your moment. Come on. Do it right now. Right now. Do it today here. Today. Just come. Just come. Sing it like you mean it. If you know it, there's nothing better. Come on. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Than knowing God bless you, my Jesus. brother. Come on. Y'all encourage our brother. He gets sweeter. As the day goes by. As the day goes by. Go by. Tell somebody you ought to know. You ought to know him. You ought to get to know. Get to know him. Don't wait. Come on, somebody. Do it right now. Right now. Do it today. today. Just come. Just come. Come on, invite somebody. Invite some man. They may be around you. Oh. Come on, I see you. Come on. Come on. Y'all encourage it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do it right now. Right now. Do it today. today. Just come. Just Ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. You ought to come. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. We've been made in good for night. Come on. Sure, it's coming in the morning, do it right. I see you, come on, do it today. I see you, come on, come on. Hallelujah, come on, church. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Do it right now. Do it today, yes, you ought to just come. Come on, I see you, there we go. Come on, come on, just come, come on, ain't never too late, come on. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. This is your moment, come on, come on. This is your hour, do it right, right now. Do it today, today. Oh, I today. see you, come on, man, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. These are grown men, y'all ought to be a part of them. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I see you, brother. Come on, come on. Do it right now. Right I now. see you, man. Come on, today. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. You still got a moment? Right now, today. Right now. Today. today. Just come. Just come. You see, stepping into manhood ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Right now. Right now. Today. Today. Just come. Just come. Some brothers out there thinking about it, but you got to move, man. You got to make a decision. Right now. You got to do it now. Today. You got to do it today. I Just see you. Come on, man. Come on. Y'all look encourage him. You doing the right thing. You in the right place. Right now. I see you today. today. I see you. Come on. Come on. Just come on. I see him coming. Y'all got to do better than this. Oh, 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 come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Do it right now. Right now. Do it today. Just come. It's your last call, brother. Come on.
Somebody put your hands together and make some noise. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Load those hand claps in the chat. Look what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Listen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, we celebrate y'all. We celebrate y'all. We celebrate y'all. We celebrate you, man. Y'all in the right place. People don't know it. It's hard for men to step out. We, we already stepping out in every area of life. It's as if there's one more thing. But let me tell you, what you've done today, I mean this, means more than you could ever imagine. Other men will step out because of you. Y'all, this is a movement. This ain't a moment, this is a movement. These are an army of men, it's an army, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, God is good. Y'all don't know how nervous I was about that sermon, man. But this is confirmation. It don't get no better than this. This is confirmation. I was always told, and I mean this, and some people won't understand this, but it's true. People are always asking, where are the men in church? Why don't men come to church by and large? And there's an answer to that. It's not because men don't respect God. It's not because men don't fear God. It's because there's not much in church that's geared toward men. Even the psychology behind the worship style is not necessarily a manly thing. Not too many men want to stand up and clap all the time. Not too many men want to raise their hands and yell at the top of their voice. It's not something that you hear a lot of men doing. When we come, we're sitting, we listening, we watching. We want to see if this is all they say it is. And when men respond, this is why. It's because the preacher wasn't beating around the bush, wasn't trying to make everything sound pretty. He spoke to you like a man. And men respect men. And that's what this is about. And I praise God that God put it in me in a way where y'all could get it. I thank God. It ain't about me. It's all about God. God did the work. And I'm grateful that it brought you from where you are to this place. I don't want to take for granted that every man here is saved. But I want to make sure before you leave here that you are. The Bible says, hear this, brothers. It's not about what you do with your hands. I know. <laughs> we always condemn about the hands. But hear this, God looks at the heart. If we give God our heart, God always gets to our hands. It's very important for us to understand that. This moment is not about if you're perfect. This moment is about if you're willing. The Bible says this is how you get saved. You're not ashamed. To confess with your mouth means to say it out your mouth. That Jesus lived out and was resurrected for your sins. And in that, you are saved. If, you don't, if you're not completely confident that if your life was over right now, that you'd open your eyes in heaven, it means you're not saved. But the, trust me, we're going to handle that right now. All you got to do is repeat this prayer after me. Whether you're online or in this place, Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. And I'm asking for your forgiveness. I believe that you lived, that you died, and that you were resurrected for my sins. At this very moment, I receive your salvation and I declare that I am saved in the name of Jesus. And that's exactly what you are. Y'all come on and celebrate them, that's all it took. And it secured the rest of your eternity. Maybe you were already saved, but you strayed away, and you said, I got to get this thing together. I've been enjoying rest for far too long. 
I've been enjoying somebody else's pleasantries for far too long. And it's time for a brother to get back on his game. If that's you, that's called rededication. It means you moving closer back to God so that God can bless you and show you. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by God. And though he may stumble, God's going to hold you up. And so in the name of Jesus today, if you came to rededicate your life, listen, don't live your life in guilt. Don't be worried about the stuff that you wish you could go back and fix. Here's the news. Brother, you can't go back. All you can do is start right now and make it better. And whoever wants to hold your past against them, against you, let them hold it in your past. Because you, my friend, are moving forward. Come on, y'all, celebrate the brothers that are moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if all of y'all are impactors. I don't know if you're all members of this church. But if you're not, the Impact Cares team is around. They give you a card. You can fill that out to make sure that we stay connected. This just proves to me that we need to do more together. Don't worry, I ain't gonna get on your nerves. I ain't gonna call you every week and ask you to move nothing around and nothing like that. I'm gonna figure out what it is that we need to come together to empower men. Each one of y'all can at least, at least reach five other people. Each man can reach five other men. Y'all hear that? I wanna challenge you in that. Here's why so that we can sit down and figure out how to minister to men. To men, because it's not the same. It's not the same thing. So I want to dedicate myself to you in these moments to figure out what it is we need to do to make sure that we are providing to you the spiritual growth that you need and not trying to make you feel guilty about what we offer that doesn't serve you. Amen. I got to do this. Somebody bring me some oil. I got to do it while I can. I got to do it while I can. I got to do it while I can. All right. Come on with it. I got to do it while I can. Do y'all mind? If you, if, you, if you pass, ain't no hard feelings. I just want to anoint each and every one of y'all. Because I know tomorrow, most of y'all got to go back to work. Most of y'all have got issues you can't tell nobody about, problems on both sides. Problems on both sides. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, nothing on your side will stop your future. Nothing in your past will keep you from being who God created you to be. Nothing you've done or nothing you've said will stop the move of God on your life you are no longer a man of possibility. No, you are a man of favor. You got everything it takes to be a success. Your children and your children's children and your children's children's children will call you blessed. You're going to have enough to bless everybody. They may not see your face, but they will know your name. They're going to say, well, because he lived, more has come to me. I want y'all to lift it up and lift your hands toward these men. Come on, lift your hands toward these men. Y'all turn and face them. Turn and face them. And everybody repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all say it, in the name of Jesus. We speak that these men will go forward from potential to favor. In the name of Jesus, it is done. And somebody say amen, amen, and amen. Come on and lift up a praise. God bless you. You may return to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Y'all don't know it. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Oh, Jesus, 
Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. <laughs> y'all act like y'all ain't want to sing it, so I stop. Y'all want to try it again? Come on, if you got the victory, stand on your feet. If you believe in God for some son who's not here, some husband who's not here, some nephew, some man in your life who's not here, come on, you can claim the victory. Come on. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Come on and sing it. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Come on, you know this part. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, y'all, it's offering time. Put your hands together. If you'd like to give to the Impact Church, you can do it this way. You can mail your gifts to P.O. Box 4589, Hartford, Connecticut, 06147. You can also give electronically through Givelify by searching Impact Church International. You can also give via Cash App by searching Dollar Sign Impact Give. If you're in this place and you'd like to give physically, you may remain in your seats where you are, and the Impact Care State will come around and serve you and give you opportunity to give. However you're giving today, why don't you lift it proudly to God as we go to God in prayer. Come on, if you're giving and you're grateful that God empowered you to give, if you're at home or in this place, lift it like you're proud of what your Father has provided for you. Let us pray together. God, we thank you that we've got something to lift and something to give. It's because you've been a good daddy that we can now share the rest and the pleasantries that you've placed on us. And Lord, by faith, because we are your children, because we are your heirs, we claim now that just like daddy gave to us, we're going to be blessed to give to others. Lord, I speak over every lifted hand, wealth beyond their wildest imagination. I speak, Lord, a blessing over their life. I speak, Lord, ownership over their life. I speak commission over their life. I speak debt free over their life. In the name of Jesus. And everybody who received it said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together as we give. Hallelujah. How many know that everything belongs to the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands while you give. Put our hands together. 
together. Come on. Let's put our hands together. Come on, everybody. See, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey. Let's sing. It belongs to you. It belongs. It belongs to you. Yeah. It belongs to you, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. everybody. God bless you. Will you all stand? I hope I didn't offend too many of y'all today. But if I did, you know there's churches on every corner. You can choose the one you like. All right. But hear this. I want to just one more time, and I want you to help me online in this place, wish every father a very happy Father's Day. Come on, one more time before we leave here. And we wish you all a very happy, prosperous, and enlightening Juneteenth day. Amen. Amen. As you leave here to celebrate, look this way online in this place. I want to bless you. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who presents us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And everybody who agreed said amen, amen, amen. and amen. Happy Juneteenth and Father's Day to y'all. God bless you. Have a great week. Come on, sing. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Yeah, it belongs to you. It belongs. Everybody sing, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. We'll see you next time.